This vigilante takes matters into their own hands to try to get swift justice, but there are questions about overstepping legal boundaries and being able to protect themselves from these cyber criminals. So a scammer texted me and I don't think they enjoyed this interaction nearly as much as I did. A Nigerian artist got scammed and that bummed me out, so I scammed that guy's scammer. Welcome to Gaslighting for Good, where I made a scammer take down his own account by making him so paranoid of the world I'd created around him. My name's Ryan and this is my master's degree in Homeland Security and they did Meet Ryan Kelly. He's a full-time comedian. Message received. <laughs> Part-time influencer. Got shoes options and I've got to rub the alpaca for luck. Thanks, alpacalypse. And now... So someone's pretending to be me, so to take him down, I need to pretend to be somebody else who happens to be a fan of me, but then I need pretend me to contact fake not me so that I can end up taking the account down. Make sense? Let's go. A vigilante. And it was earlier this year that I got scammed, and I was like, I actually have all the education around this. Let's go hunt scammers. From victim to hero. So is it worth being Spider-Man doing my thing? Ryan has put his cybersecurity degree to good use. He pulled the scammer's driver's license, home address, and then called the FBI field office. And they were like, why do you have this information? And I was like, no reason. Uh, and I explained what had happened. And weirdly enough, that FBI field agent just goes, uh, oh my gosh, dude, that just happened to me. Yeah, so they took care of it. And it, it really does prove everybody gets scammed. And after that, uh, someone tried to scam my 79-year-old Aunt Anne. And I was like, I'm gonna take care of everybody's Aunt Anne. And he does. He gets up to 12 requests a day for people looking for quick justice after being swindled out of money. You essentially scam the scammer, which is ironically funny because you're a comedian. Like it is sorta, it gives me a chuckle every time you do one of these. But I have to ask you, is what you do legal? What's legal and what's not is, is definitely up to interpretation. I don't think there's anything illegal about that. What Ryan is doing, according to NKU law professor Ken Katkin, is called scam baiting. Essentially, Ryan's wasting a scammer's time and then exposing their tactics and techniques. And doing what I do, which is mostly social engineering, this is less tech and more con, to be honest. Using deceptive tactics is not inherently criminal unless it's done um, for criminal purposes, such as to, to take something of value from somebody. So that's really, I think that's my big message, really. Ryan isn't the only one playing a cyber hero. Kid Boga on YouTube is baiting scammers as well, turning it into a performance art, entertaining his over 3 million followers. He creates a fake identity, changes his voice, and keeps the scammer on the phone for hours. I'll download any desk and do everything the scammers ask. But what they don't know is that I'm not a victim and I'm communicating directly with any desk and any time they connect to my computer, their entire call center is going to get shut down. Part of me loves these people because I do think they are providing value to society. You know, I think you're playing with fire to a certain extent. You may be an expert at this, but if they can somehow figure out who you're connected to, like your kids, your mom, your dad, could they wipe out your mom's bank account to get back at you? Well, maybe. But for these cyber vigilantes, navigating the wild west of constantly evolving internet scams and then getting people justice is worth the risk. But in reality, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they're not getting scammed. Okay, they have too many safeguards. It's your grandma, your aunt, it's your friends. It's whether it be able to demonstrate this to people and say, hey, I didn't fall for a scam because I learned from what you showed me, that's been incredibly rewarding. Now, this is a reminder that the FBI does not recommend taking part in this type of activity. If you have been a victim of cyber crime, you should immediately report this to the Internet Crime Complaint Center and then contact your local FBI field office. And I have a link to make both of those things easy for you with both resources on local12.com. Just look for this story.